I'm going to turn it over to Julie Lucas. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me here. This is out of my comfort zone. Um, there's, there's some trees here, but compared to the trees and lakes I'm used to in northeastern Minnesota, it's a little different. I want to talk about privilege, and that probably sounds strange. This has been really great for me to listen to today. So I'm Lake Country Power, and in the 15 years that I've lived where I've lived, there's been one period of time where I haven't had power for 36 hours. That's the longest I haven't had power. And it was the big thunderstorms we had roll through northeastern Minnesota last year. And it took out a huge swath. And when the power did come back on, I had to go around my house shutting off all the things that I had tried to turn on. Because I've spent in a lifetime just assuming Assuming I will have power when I turn on a switch. Assuming I will have heat when the temperatures inevitably drop to 40 below. That's a life of privilege. And I don't think we should ever lose sight as Minnesotans and as Americans on what that means for us. And so today I'm going to talk about why we have that privilege. It's metals. It's mining. We've spent a lifetime as Americans relying on coal or gas to keep us warm, to keep our TVs on, to keep our vehicles going where they go, and that's privilege. And it's not going to change as we go forward here. Mining, natural resource extraction, is still going to be what we rely on. And the problem with that is that we're having really terrible conversations about mining. Because we're not really having conversations. I think it was Derek's slide that had, nope. Was it yours or was it somebody else? Nope. And sometimes I'll talk to folks. Sometimes folks won't even talk to me when they find out what I do for a living. For years, I've used a trick where if I have to fly somewhere and someone sits down next to me and they're chatty, I'm an introvert, so I'm always like, oh. But they'll say, oh, so what do you do for a living? And for years I've said, oh, I do environmental work. Because I, I did. I, I was an environmental manager at an iron ore operation for over 10 years. And they're like, oh, the environment's just so important to protect, isn't it? And I'm like, yes, it is. And they say, where do you work specifically? And I, Hibbing Taconite Company. What's that? Iron ore. It's a, it's a mine. It's eight miles long. There's a slight environmental impact. But it's too late, by then they like me. So we need to be talking about it. We need to be honest. When our industry saw this mandate come through, what we saw was a mandate for more mining. When I hear folks talk about the length of power lines, oh, and I realize copper, beautiful, beautiful copper, is what is needed. I wonder why we're not talking about that. This legislative session is wrapping up, and we've been told nobody wants to talk about mining. Don't bring up mining, Lucas, whatever you do. How are we not? Honestly, this is, this is embarrassing that we can't talk honestly about where our privilege comes from. It's okay. Mining isn't good or bad. Mining is. How we do it is good or bad, but mining in and of itself, it just is. And we've relied on it so long that we don't even think about it. It was really good for me to make this drive over here because I don't get to this area of the state very often, and it was good for me to see all the farms. We don't, we don't have farms. <laughs> we think we do. We don't. We're like, oh, that's cute, you know, 40 acres. But you don't see what we see. On my drive south, I drove past several mines, big mines. The iron ore mines are big. And that's just my background. I'm just, I'm just used to it. I don't even notice anymore. People will stop on the side of the highway to take pictures of it. I'm like, just, it's just a mine. But I just take it for granted. And the electric transition... 
is metal hungry. It's very metal hungry. We're going to go from fossil fuel dependence to mineral dependence. And I know, fo well, actually, that probably shows up pretty well. An electric car, metal, so much metal. Wind, solar, metal. And that's okay. It's okay. But let's not not talk about it. What's crazy about Minnesota and why it blows my mind to see that we're one of the most aggressive states for going to this transition is that we have the metals to support it. Not 100%. Because I'll hear folks say, yeah, we have copper, nickel, but it's not 100% of our needs. Our iron ore industry is not 100% of our country's steel needs either. But it's still something. If I walk out in that parking lot right now, I can almost guarantee you all the steel that's in that parking lot started its life in northeastern Minnesota or Michigan. Vast majority. I can't imagine it's not actually all of it. And we're not just iron. We have all of these other metals. The universe, it's, it, it's crazy. I, are there any actual like closet geologists in this room? I would probably know because geologists are, you just, you can sense a geologist a mile away. They're just really happy people. And what's crazy about Minnesota that most folks not in our region, you know, you don't know this because why would you know this? It would be a weird thing to just know casually. We've always had, everybody knows about our massive iron ore resources. I shouldn't say everyone. I actually just met someone from the state of Minnesota who said, oh, that old, the, the historical mining. And I'm like, historical? We have six operations. We produce 48 million long tons of iron a year. That's not historical. That's today. But those resources started two billion years ago. So the Mesabi Range, the Cuyuna Range, the Vermilion Range, that's a two billion, old year, uh, two billion year old formation. The earth got enough oxygen, the iron oxidized, dropped out, voila. But then a billion years later, we got this cool thing called the Duluth Complex and the Tamarack Intrusion. Because a billion years ago, our earth thought, you know, North America is just a little too compact. How about we just split it in half? And so it tried to split itself apart. The mid-continent ripped. You guys keep talking about mid-continent energy. I'm like, no, 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 it's a mid-continent rift where the earth tried to split itself apart. And when it did that, all these volcanoes underground, all the magma, all the mantle melted, and it blurped up into our world. And it blurped up into the crust. And when it did that, it brought with it copper, nickel, platinum, palladium, gold. And that's why we have that Duluth complex that you see on the map. And it's why down in Tamarack, Minnesota, Aiken County, we also have the Tamarack intrusion, uh, which is talon metal. So Tamarack, the intrusion just means the earth intruded up into itself. So these are our projects. These are where the resources are. And they're not insignificant resources. These are world-class, some of the largest untapped metal resources that we have. We need copper. As you talked about building transmission lines, copper is a beautiful thing. Electrons just keep hopping along copper. We're going to need to mine it. We know we're going to need to mine it. Are we talking about where we're going to do that, though, and what that looks like? And some people don't want to. They do not want to talk. They're, Minnesota's off limits. It's wet. You know, we have the best watersheds in the world. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what mining means. Because our watersheds are really important to us, and they should be. But there's watersheds everywhere, and they're really important to whoever lives there. Folks like to think we can recycle our way out of this. We can just recycle. What are you recycling? I live close to Excel Energy's massive, is it 500 kil the, the big power lines that come down from Canada. And when those were being built, there was a gentleman who thought it would be a good idea to steal metals from that power line, and, and he died. And he thought it would be a good idea to steal from that site because metals are worth a lot to recycle. 
We're re we are recycling. Anyone who's a contractor knows if you have copper wire on your site, you better make sure it's under lock and key because people will recycle it. We do recycle, but what we are asking for this world to produce is on a scale that we just have not got to. 70% of all the copper that's ever been mined is still in circulation. We know how to recycle it. We are recycling it, but there's just not enough in circulation to support it. And I put EVs up here, but it's just because I want us to walk through some math. Right now, 2.6 million light fleet vehicles in Minnesota, just Minnesota, not the nation, not the world, just Minnesota, and only 1% of those are EVs. If each one of those has six times as much metal as a non-EV car, and if by 2035, Minnesota's all new cars have to be electric or hydrogen powered, where are those metals coming from? Those batteries, I mean, it's not like cars just keep trading in. Ideally, those cars are gonna run to 10 to 15 years on those batteries. So what are we recycling? We need to recycle though. I'll talk about that here in a second. I see you getting twitchy over there at the time. <laughs> it's fair enough. How are we powering these cars? I drove up, I had to go down to the Twin Cities yesterday, then I came up on 94 to, you know, yesterday, and as I was driving my little Camry, I thought, what, am I gonna, what would I have to do if I had to charge this? Where are all those charging stations? How is energy getting to those charging stations? How is that energy being captured in the first place? We have to have those talks. And recycling is a huge part of that, but the International Energy Association estimates by 2040, recycling is only going to provide 12% of all the metals and minerals. It's not enough. And like I said, the US, we can, Minnesota, we can't provide all the metals, but if we're not going to ask ourselves what we can provide, that's embarrassing. It's unethical. It's selfish. We are asking other countries to please provide for our privilege. We're better than that. That wasn't supposed to end with a question mark, but I live close to Canada, so I talk like Canadians. <laughs> please don't let there be any Canadians in the room who yell at me. We are better than that. These metals can be continued to be reused and recycled. Minnesota metals could power a big portion of Minnesota indefinitely. Metals are beautiful. They recycle well. Now, I'm not going to ask you to remember all this, but I do want people thinking about this. We don't mine willy-nilly. I started my career on a, at a mine site that did start before all these regulations, and there's a gentleman in the room who spent his summers there, and I'm going to hope it wasn't his fault that I had so much work to do to clean up the place. We need these regulations. I've seen what happens without these regulations. We need the agencies that oversee us. It's important that we empower these agencies to oversee us. And it's important that we have watchdog organizations that oversee the folks that are supposed to be overseeing us. But it's important that we talk about that and we be open and honest with ourselves and our consumption. This is a book that came out not that long ago. And some folks say, we don't need to talk about cobalt because lithium, lithium iron phosphate battery, we're just not going to use cobalt. Okay, let's talk about all the other metals then and where they're coming from. I'm really proud of American steel. When I see something has been made with American steel, I know the iron ore mines that it came from. I know how stressed out the environmental managers are there. And, but I also am married to a steel worker. And I know what our health insurance is like. I know what his wages are like. Sometimes he doesn't even know what his wages are like, because I just take care of that. But I know what his safety programs are like and what our safety managers do. And that's part of that too. We need better conversations. We cannot be talking about this transition without asking ourselves, 
how we are constructing it. Whoop, <laughs> look, I even set myself a timer to yell at me. So that's all we're asking for. We're not asking for people to be pro-mining. We're asking people to be just pro having a true conversation about it. So thank you for inviting me, and we'll 